Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before going to today's broadcast, join me as we call for our daily bread in faith. Are you ready? Make this declaration with me. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. And Father, we honor you this morning. Thank you for the glory of your word. And thank you for what you're doing in us. We receive your word with gladness. And I declare right now, every burden is lifted. Every yoke is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I began yesterday. To share with you what I titled Character in Believing. Character in Believing. And our text was from Romans chapter 5. I'll just read from verse 3. It says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. I told you, listen, challenges are not always from the devil. Challenges are not always from the devil. Life itself is designed that you will encounter challenges take the devil out of the equation you will still encounter challenges now they are only coming to prove let me read something to you deuteronomy chapter 8 deuteronomy chapter 8 i need to show you this thank you lord jesus deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 2. I want you to listen to this now. It says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. He led them in the wilderness for 40 years. He says, To humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Did you see that now? So he says, God led them in the wilderness for 40 years and there was one thing he wanted to get out from them, to know if, he will, if they will obey his commandments or not. So God had promised this children of Israel, the promised land. And then he promised them right from Abraham, praise God. Now the time of fulfillment has come. But God didn't just say, oh, I promised Abraham. So you know what? I'm going to throw you guys into the promised land that I promised Abraham. No, when the time of fulfillment came, God had to be sure that these are truly the seed of Abraham. Why? If they are the seed of Abraham, there are certain characteristics or character traits that you find in Abraham that you will find in them. So God wanted to know all that. So he is not going to give an instruction to everyone. Hey, all of you, take your first son, your, your only sons, and go and offer them in one of the mountains. He wasn't going to do that to everybody, you understand? Now, but then he did something. He says he... He led them in the wilderness and his purpose was he wanted to humble them. I'm showing this to let you know challenges are not always from Satan. They are not always from the devil. Now God subjected them to that long journey by himself. And the purpose is he wanted to, to know if they would keep his word or not. So God is not the one who believes in giving you things on the platter like that. No, he doesn't. He was going to put you through. You see, because because that's it. Everything God is giving to you is on purpose. God doesn't just look at your face and say, mm, uh, your face is, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with your face today, so I'm going to give you a gift. No, sir. Everything God does is on purpose, specifically for a reason so if you don't know this you will not understand why challenges come so now god says he let them to humble them and to prove them to know if they will what was in their heart now what is in your heart 
tells what character is what character traits you carry it's in your heart so if i subject you to different kinds of situation i'm looking out to see the kind of decision that you will make the, the decision you will make will reveal your character the decision you will make will reveal your character so now watch this God says he wanted to know what was in their heart. Now, this is God. Why didn't he just look and know, oh, I see, I see, I see what's in your heart? No, even God puts you in situations to wait for you to react. Is it as that? Does that make him wicked? No. Listen, let's go back to our Romans now. Romans chapter 5. He says, verse 3, And not only so we glory in tribulation, also we glory in challenges. Also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience work, and patience experience. Now experience is character. Why is it called experience? What you do over and over and over and over. And then you see the reason why you have to do it. You see why, it's do, why, why you needed to do it that way. It's experience. So, when you are subjected to a, a, a routine over and over, and then once in a while there's a pop, things that pop up, um, situations that you have to deal with. Now, God let them, you know how God led them through that wilderness for 40 years? Sometimes I believe where they have passed before, God will lead them to come and pass again. Why? Because he wanted to know what did they see in that place? And what did they interpret what they saw in that place? Now, right from when God created Adam, that has been God's principle. Remember, the Bible says he created the animals and then he brought them to Adam to see what Adam will call them. Whatever Adam calls them became their name. Now, it wasn't a naming ceremony per se. That Adam would just sit down there and say, hey, what's this one? Okay, this is lion. What's this one? This is good. I called, no, no, no. God brought the animals Adam would spend time with the animals. He would, he would have some, I mean, sometimes maybe he would run, they would follow him. He would, and then at the end of the day, based on his experience with the animal, he would give it a name. He said, well, you, you are just goats. You, you are just an elephant. You, you are just a, a crocodile. See, based on his experience with them, he named them so god was looking out for what he would call them and then, you know eventually when he he made eve he brought her to adam and that's exactly what he did he brought her to adam and kept quiet and was watching and adam having fellowship with eve and 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 then he looked at her like ah this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh i'll call her woman experience see god was producing experience in him which is character. So situations come in your life and God is watching to see what you will call them. And let me tell you this. It is whatever you call them that reveals who you are. I know sometimes you think what you call the situation will, is going to tell what the situation is. No. When you name a situation, that you're naming that situation actually reveals your character if you face a situation and you suddenly just say you know what me i can't handle this i can't handle it it is not because the situation is too among us no it is because your own strength is small but what if it's something so big that i, I can't handle hey i said if you believe in christ you must have a walk with God now if you have a walk with God the Holy Spirit will always be quick to remind you you can do all things when you find a believer say I can't handle this I can't take this I can't do it you know you know based on general principle that he's not telling the truth why do I say he's not telling the truth because that's not what God's Word says concerning him God's Word says you can do all things 
It may be a challenge with your spouse. You say, I can't take this anymore. It's not true. You actually can't take it. You see, you are not subjecting yourself. Now, let me tell you this again. You can never stop challenges from coming your way. It is impossible. The only way to, to stop challenges from coming your way is to tie yourself in one particular spot and sit down there. Don't see nobody. Don't do any. Don't even think any thought because when you think thoughts, you'll be motivated to take action. So don't even think any thought. Just stay in one place. Shut your eyes. Shut your mind and just be sleeping there for the rest of your life. See, but as long as you will take a step in life, you will encounter challenges. And those challenges are sent, they are orchestrated to build you and to prove the character that is in you. So when we talk about the character, our character in believing, character in believing, we are talking about what patterns have you formed? since you believed what patterns have you formed in life since you believed it is your work with God that will help you produce character now when those challenges come how are you supposed to respond to them do you respond to them by complaining or do you respond to them by first you see that's why when you got born again, the first thing, the first thing that dawns on you is the fatherhood of God over your life. The Bible tells us because we are sons, God has given us the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Because you are a son, God has sent the spirit of sonship right into your heart. And what does that spirit do? It enables you to recognize God as your father. It's not something someone teaches you to do. It's something you just, you just come into that awareness that God is my father. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the first work of the Holy Spirit He does in your life. Beyond speaking in tongues, beyond... This is a knowledge that I'm not by myself anymore. I have a father. And then you will now begin to understand. God loves me. It is the Holy Spirit. It, it's, it's there in Romans 8. Let me show you. Verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed... Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. The Holy Spirit is in you first and foremost to make you realize the fatherhood of God over your life. If you got to went for that altar call or got on your knees in your room, however you got saved, if this is not in place in your life, I'm sorry, you are not saved yet. If this is not in place in your life, you are not yet saved. See, that's the number one work the Holy Spirit does. In. If you got saved and you're thinking, mm, I'm, I got born again yesterday, oh, hey, but hmm, I pray God do not judge me or all the bad things I've done oh, because the way I'm feeling right now, ah, it's like this thing will come back and haunt me. Then you didn't get saved. You only say the prayer. Salvation is not because you say the prayer. Salvation, it happens when the Holy Spirit responds to that prayer. So if there is no response, there is no salvation yet. You can't just stand in front of the altar and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I worship you. I No, 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 no. You pray, but then he answers. So are you born again yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm born again. Oh, how did you get born again? Oh, well, one time one pastor came to our church and then he preached to me and said, I just knew that day that. That's not how you know you're born again. You went for the altar call, quite all right. But the way you know you're born again is that the Holy Spirit has given you salvation. 
and he bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. So first and foremost, God sends that spirit right into your heart and the work of that spirit is to bring to the awareness of the fatherhood of God. And number two, he bears witness with you that you are a child of God. Praise God. Our time is up again today. Listen, God is molding you. So submit to his building and you will surely be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow.